You have children, I assume, right? I do, four of them. Okay, so that's I have three. Uh, your children are much younger, obviously. Oh, they're 10, 9, 6, and 17 months. Okay, so your young children, right now they're not fully formed. As you can't tell whether they're going to be superstar athletes or whatever. And more, right now you have them under your control, more or less. When they get to be teenagers, it's a little more challenging. When they're young adults, mm -hmm. you know, they may call you back. They may not call you back. <laughs> so uh, raising children is the most difficult thing to do in life. Interesting. Wow. More they, than marriage? Tougher than marriage? Yes, because you're dealing with more than one person, typically. You're dealing with three or four different children, or if you have four children. And it's very difficult. I mean, also, m marriage is complicated, but... But children is the hard, hardest thing to do is raising children who are happy and successful. And, and that's very hard to do. Now, um, when you're wealthy and reasonably prosperous, it's even harder. Because um, I had no money growing up, and I, I realized if I'm going to get anywhere, i got to work hard. Yep. You, if you have money, the tendency is to give your kids money, mm -hmm. make it easy for them. And in the end, you're probably hurting them. Um, so it's not easy to raise, raise kids when you have a lot of money or you're prominent or you're successful. Very difficult to do that, I think. So, so there's a lot of context, a lot of questions right there. So one, I've heard a lot of different formulas about happiness. What's yours? And two, how do you do it with the kids when you do have money? At what point is it important to manage expectations with them? Well, with my children, they, they're well-educated. They went to Harvard, Stanford, and Duke, and so forth. So they got a good education. But they, um, you know, they all had challenges. Every child has challenges. No perfect child. So you always have challenges, and a parent has to figure out how to deal with cha health challenges or whatever they might be. Uh, I would say um, if I said to my children, I'm giving you each a billion dollars, and they got a billion dollars, would they make them a better person? I don't know. Um, very rarely do you inherit a billion dollars, and all of a sudden you <laughs> win a Nobel Peace Prize or something like that. People that change the world often come from blue-collar blue -collar backgrounds or middle-class backgrounds. The people that change the world and the ones you really want to admire are people that really came from backgrounds probably like yours and mine. So give me the formula for happiness. Formula well, my, for happiness. Well, my formula for happiness is, is basically, of course, being reasonably healthy. That's good because you don't want to have health problems. But, but basically having a relationship with um, other people that you that you find uh, satisfying, particularly your children. Secondly, um, it's giving back to other people. Um, generally, when people help other people, they feel better about themselves. Uh, people who don't help anybody else probably don't feel that well, that, that great about themselves. There are many people who are very wealthy, extremely wealthy. They don't give away very much, and I don't think they're very happy people. Um, Generally, giving away money or your time, your time is more valuable than your money. You can make more money. You can't make more time. I think people that do that um, feel happier about themselves. And as a general rule of thumb, I encourage people to do philanthropic things, which I include meaning giving your time mm -hmm. and your volunteering uh, things, not just money. Um, people that, I, I, that are isolated, that sit in their house and just count their money and big, build big houses and count how big the, their boat is, I'm not sure they're that happy. The most tortured souls I know are extremely wealthy people. The happiest people I know are often people who have no money. Now, uh, that doesn't mean you don't want to have any money, but you have to make sure you understand what money's all about. It's designed to make you, I think, uh, have a better life, but you're going to have a better life if you help other people. Now, I tell people all the time when I'm making philanthropic or pitches, when you when you're trying to give away, um, when you give away money, give away time, help other people, uh, you'll feel happier about yourself. Happier people live longer. Grumpy people don't live as long. Also, there's a special place in heaven reserved for people that do this. Now, people laugh when I say that, but I say, why would you want to take a chance that I'm wrong? I could be right. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You sound like a pastor saying that. That's the pastor's uh, right. clothes. Right. right. So, um, <laughs> you know, in, in life, um, as you get older, I'm old, obviously older than you, you know, what you do worry about as you get older is your health because you, we all know uh, you know, but people don't don't have the same lifespan. When I was younger, I used to ask my parents, "Why do you read the obituary pages?" And they say, "Well, I want to see who I knew that died." I read the obituary pages now because my friends are dying. Um, mm. You know, people younger than me are dying. I'm saying, "How come I'm lucky that I'm not dead and my yeah. friends are 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 gone?" In some cases, so you know, when you read the obituary pages and you see somebody 45, 55, 65 dying. What did they do wrong? How did they have such, mm. such bad fortune? So, you know, every day is a blessing in a sense that, you know, you're trying to do something useful with your life. And hopefully, uh, you know, you have a long time to go to make your kids, uh, you know, appreciate what you built. But in the end, raising four children is not easy. You said marriage is easier than kids. Okay. For me. Uh, uh, well, and, well and, I'm going to make it clear. Marriage, half the people that get married are divorced. So it obviously isn't that easy. I don't want to make it sound like it's easy. Yeah. 
But but I guess I guess the question I want to ask from is the following: uh, Did your wife help you? Like, did you and your wife build a business together? Was it, or was it no. always separate? No, it was I was my business. You. Okay, I, but I, people who build business with their partner, uh, their smart, their spouse, I think it's that can be done. But sometimes when you're working together with somebody twenty four hours a day, it's a little challenging because you have you know there's always tensions, and sometimes I've noticed that husband wife businesses don't work as well. So okay, so so for you, you've seen it not work if they're working together, but you've also seen it not work if it's separate. Because to me, the way I would see it is I'm push back and you know say no, nah, I don't agree with you. If is your wife uh, working in this business, oh, the insurance business, we did everything together. She's got an office upstairs, okay. and first time we shared an office together, she said, "Babe, we can't be in the same office. You're too loud." So we put, and we literally okay. had our office complete opposite ends. Uh, and then I saw a lot of my friends who made money, and they built the business separately. It's as if the more time was going by, interest was, you know, separating, and there were no running for the same cause except for the kids. The only thing that was in common was kids, and then eventually it went from being a wife to being a roommate. That's what I saw a lot of times with people who were doing two different businesses. Now, you have more wisdom than I, than I do. That's why I'm asking you. I have more you. gray hair. You don't have any gray hair. I have some of it. <laughs> My wife, I was standing there looking a little like bit. gray hair this morning. <laughs> wow. Jimmy Carter, for whom I worked in the White House, um, he's been married 75 years. Um, the only time he came close to getting divorced was when he and his wife agreed to write a book together. They found out <laughs> they couldn't. They couldn't. They, they couldn't do it. They ultimately gave the publisher the money back, and they didn't. They didn't do it, uh, or at least to write the book together. It was uh, so that was the only time he said he ever got close close to getting divorced. So you know, working together with a partner and a spouse can be wonderful at times when things work out. Yeah. But when there are problems, who gets blamed? And who you know, it, it's I don't want to get into the, the whether it's easier to raise children or be um, uh, married. married, married yeah. But uh, raising children, my point is, is very difficult. And you've got four children. You're going to be with them, their, their father, their whole life. And I, I ask people, when do you stop worrying about your children? I think when they turn 60 or 70, you probably stop worrying about them. But the rest of your life, you're, every time you get a call late at night you're gonna, from a child, you're going to wonder what went wrong. And if they're out later than you wanted to be out, what are they going to do? You know, when they're one and two and three years old, they look angelic. When they're 15 and 16 and 17 and they're trying to do yeah. something you don't want them to do, not so angelic. David, why, why, why do so many billionaires' marriages not end up working out? Uh, I talked to uh, one of my uh, pastors. He says, look, I just want to tell you this. I don't know what it is, but when you become a billionaire, things change. Kids change. Not kids change. Relationships change. Family looks at you differently. Friends look at you differently. Sure. You have to be kind of careful on how to maneuver through those things when you're making that kind of money. Is it the fact that more billionaires are getting divorces, or is it the fact that billionaires are more known and people know them, and we notice more when they get divorces than the average person gets divorced? It's divorce. the latter. Actually, okay, the, there's a higher divorce rate among people who are blue-collar workers. Really? Yeah, higher divorce Very rate. Very interesting. For higher divorce rate. Wow. Um, they have more challenges as well, but huh. billionaires... When they make a lot of money, how do you make a lot of money? It's not just sitting around. You're tough. You're 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 driven. Mm -hmm. And when you take those qualities and you bring it to your marriage, it's a little more challenging. You say to your wife, "Look, I'm a brilliant person. I made a billion dollars. What did you contribute today to the marriage?" <laughs> and you know, it, that can, can tend to you know be offsetting. Sometimes there are billionaires that that uh, that you know have reasonably good marriages. I, my observation, but as we've known, some of the wealthiest men in our yeah. country have recently gotten divorced. So it's not that easy to be married when you're that rich. Yeah, it, I, I'm, I'm sure. Listen, marriage is already hard, let alone al adding all the other components to it. But, uh, you know, it, 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 maybe there's an element. And again, I don't know where you go outside where, you know, the whole saying where uh, everybody says, oh, my God, it's this. Look who it is. Oh, my God. Oh my God I cannot believe it. And you come home. Hey, babe, can you take out the trash? You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, do you know who I am? Like, do you? <laughs> well, there is that element. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for example, when you're in, you're in the office, you're treated like a god. You're, yeah. you know, everybody works for you. When you come home, you're not a god. you got to go pick out, you know, take out the garbage or deal with the kids, change the diaper, whatever it might be. You know, people say, I don't have to do this. I'm a billionaire. I'm a multi-billionaire. But you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So with all the craziness taking place, I believe future looks bright. If you believe future looks bright, get your latest future looks bright hat of Valuetainment. It says future looks bright here, future looks bright here. We got them in white, we got them in black, we got them in red. Our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan bought one, then he bought three. Then when those three people were in the office, they had to order 58 of them because people wanted the future looks bright hat, especially during times like this because ain't nobody saying 
Future Looks Bright. To order your Future Looks Bright hat, click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.